Hi friends, it's Deanna here today and I am super excited today to be doing a really fun, cute dress tutorial. Today I have this beautiful woven fabric and we're going to make a sheared dress with this fabric. So let's get started. First thing you're going to do is you're going to want to measure yourself so you know exactly how big to cut your pieces. Um, when I'm making this dress, I'm going to make the sheared piece and then the dress is going to continue on and it's going to be like a gathered dress. And then I'm going to add a tear at the bottom to add like a little tear um, to it. <laughs> a little tear to the bottom of the dress, but you don't have to add a tear. You can hem it as short as you want or whatever. Um, and then I'm going to use, I'm just going to do little straps that I'm going to tie up or just like little straps that I can just go over. But then uh, from there, you can try to figure out what kind of sleeve you want to add to it. Or if you just want to leave it sleeveless, that's just fine as well. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do, like I said, we're going to take our measurements. Uh, we're going to start by measuring our bust. I'm going to go all the way around and we're going to measure what your bust is. And I have 36. I'm going to grab a little paper so I can write it down or I'll forget. All right, so we got a 36 bust. Now, for shearing, when you do the shearing, it brings the fabric in. So you want to go anywhere from one and a half to two times the size of your bust uh, to go for it to when you steam it and you and you shear it, it is going to bring it in. Now the really cool thing about that is that whenever I do a gathered skirt to attach to a dress, I usually do it 1.5 to 2 wide. So you have already done that because you know the top part will be gathered but then the bottom would be open. I mean it's got the ha gatherings but it'll be open if that makes sense. Um, so that would be double. So what you can do since we're going to have a front panel and a back panel and sew it at the sides, you can cut one panel by 36 or whatever your uh, bust measurement is and then another one by the same bust measurement. Now, because I'm going two times, which means it's gonna be a little bit looser, then I'm not even gonna worry about seam allowances. Uh, when you're gonna sew here, you're gonna have that seam allowance, so that's gonna take about an inch on each side, I mean, a half an inch on each side to an inch, uh, depending on how much seam allowance you take. So that's like uh, anywhere from um, two to four inches. But um, if you, because I went double, uh, you have a little bit of leeway. So I'm gonna, I'm okay with that. So that's what I'm going to do for the width. Now you have to figure out the length. Um, you, first of all, you know you're going to have, well, not first of all, let's just measure starting where you want it to start. So I wanted to start like right above the bust. Um, and it's gonna go all the way down and then you're gonna figure out where you want that first tier to start, I mean your little tier to start or where you want it to end if you're not even adding a tier. So I'm gonna go like all the way to like mid thigh or so, so I'm gonna say 28, let's just say 28. Now you can always make it whatever length you want. Um, it's better to make it a little bit longer because you can always trim it up um, and then go from there. I'm going to need a seam allowance where I'm going to hook it to the next layer. So I'm going to add 0.5, which is what I'm going to use as a seam allowance, to the length. And then also at the top, you're going to want to fold it and uh, stitch it. So you want like a hem, a hem allowance. So now you got to add however much you want the hem to be. Do you want a little gather, like a little piece flopping up? Do you want it just a barely a hem? What do you want to do? And that's what you add. I think I'm just going to do like an inch hem, which means I have to add two inches because it goes over. Um, so we'll add the two inches of hem so 30.5 will be my length so i'm doing two pieces two rectangle pieces one is going to be 36 by 30.6 and the other one is going to be exactly the same so two pieces 36 by 30.5 now the measurements will change depending on your measurements after you measure you're gonna make sure that they you know fit you obviously um, and then for the straps uh we're going to do the width of the strap, um, however wide you want that strap to be, let's say you want that strap to be, you know, like pretty thick. This is, I think this is one and a half inches. Yeah. 
So this one is like one and a half inches. So if you want a one and a half inch strap, you're going to uh, double that because I'm gonna fold it and sew it together. I'm gonna double it and I'm gonna add seam allowance. So double, that would be three. And then I wanna add uh, an inch seam allowance. So that way I have half an inch, half an inch. So that's four inches of the strap. And then the length of the strap, you can go ahead and grab your measuring tape and measure from where you want your dress to end to the back. And really it's like 13, but really you can just kind of measure and then and make a strap because you can always trim it um, if it's if to to the length that you need it. So I'm probably just gonna wait and cut the strap like when I'm done with the dress and try it on and then measure myself and see, hey, how high do I want my dress to go? How low do I want it to go? Do I wanna cut two pieces and tie it at the top? What do I wanna do? And I'll go from there. Now, the tier, it also, the bottom tier, if you wanna do a bottom tier, it all depends on how, um, how long you want it, how tall you want it. So you can either wait and try on your dress, which is what I wanna do. Try on your dress when you have done shearing and then decide how long you want it. Do you want it uh, midi? Do you want it maxi? Do you want it to the knee? How long you want it? And that will uh, affect the length. And depending on, um, like, then you'll have to add seam allowance for hem and to attach to the bottom of the skirt. And then the width, I like to use 1.5 as my guide. So I will, I will grab my, so my measurement is 36 times two, and then I'm gonna add, I'm gonna times it by 1.5, and that will be how wide, how long I'm going to cut that strip. So. That's a lot of information, but it really is simple information. I'm gonna go ahead and get to cutting and then I'm gonna get started um, putting my dress together. All right, now that I've got my two pieces, these are my uh, pieces for the bodice. I don't wanna get messed up which one's my height and which one's my width. So make sure that you keep that in mind when you go to the next step, which is shearing. Well, the next step will be hemming uh, the top part before you start shearing because it's easier to hem it before it crunches up. Um, so make sure that you keep that in mind. You know, if you, if you need to remeasure and make sure what that is, this one is the 36, so I know this is the width. Um, or, you know, because they're very similar and you don't want to end up, you know, um, getting them mixed up. So here it is, all right. So now I'm going to fold up my inch, because remember we did a inch seam allowance for the top and um, hem that top part. Because this is a woven, uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my uh, serger and I'm gonna finish up all the raw edges. That way, once I'm doing all the process of um, shearing and all that stuff, it doesn't start fraying. So I'm gonna first, I'm gonna go and serge on my raw edges and then I'll come back and, and fold it down an inch and top stitch it on my, serge, on my sewing machine. And I'm gonna do that for both panels. All right, friends, so our next step is to mark our fabric. So here is our um, edge that we just hemmed. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna lay out our fabric, everything out of the way, and we're going to, you can use a water-soluble marker in, or whatever you have, and then we're going to mark lines all across um, that are half an inch apart. So they're gonna just be lines and that's gonna be our lines for when we're shearing, okay? Now, how wide you wanna make that, how much shearing you wanna do is really up to you, how low you want the shearing to go, how high or whatever. Um, I'm gonna start shearing, uh, I'll probably do like 20 lines and see what that looks like and then I'll do more. Like you can put it over and, and, and see like how low you want it and stop wherever, cause you can always add more lines 
um, if you felt like you wanted to do more. So I'm just going to do, I think 20 and kind of measure, see where it lands and then add more if I need to. So let's mark our fabric and then we'll get to the fun part, which is shearing. Okay, so it looks like I did too many lines. 20, 20 lines really low, so I'm gonna do 15 and then I'm gonna see what it looks like and then I'm gonna do more if I need to. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, then 12, 13. Maybe I'll do 13 and see what that looks like, but it'll shrink, so. Now we're gonna prep the bobbin. I've got this um, elastic thread. I got it online at like, I think, uh, yeah, at Wawalk. So what we're going to do is we're going to place that right through like our little bobbin little thing right here and just kind of hold it. And we are lightly wrapping it around, just very lightly. We're not stretching the thread. We're just wrapping it and winding that bobbin all the way around. And you want to wind it loosely but you're just gonna go and keep going all the way until it's completely full. Uh, you don't wanna go in outside. You still want it to be in there, so don't like bulge it out because it'll get stuck, but you're just gonna wind it all the way around. All right, so now it's pretty full and our bobbin is ready for us to go put it in our bobbin casing. And you're probably gonna have to uh, fill a few bobbins because it's gonna take a little bit. It's gonna take more than this obviously So you'll fill a bunch of bobbins. You can do all of them right now or you can just do one at a time It's up to you. Okay, so first we're gonna set up our machine and I've got a stitch length of five It's what I'm going with and then the tension I'm moving it all the way to like between a seven and an eight I'm gonna do like a little bit seven and a little bit um, that will change with your machine. You want to try it and figure out what your machine uh, would like it would like you to do. And then we're going to put our um, bobbin in that we just you we just threaded. Now remember that our bobbin has to look like a P. So let me get it really nice and ready. And you're gonna put it right in the casing. Now, one thing that's a big deal is to make sure that your uh, bobbin, your thread goes into your tension disc. If it gets caught and it doesn't go in there, then it's not going to have good results. It's not going to do the right thing. So you need to make sure that it goes in there and it gets all the way inside the tension disc so that it holds the tension. And then we're going to uh, close it and get it up to the top. Pull that out, and here it comes. All right, so now we are ready to start. So now we're just literally going to be sewing straight stitch, like straight pieces, uh, straight stitches all the way. So following those lines that you created, you're just going to do a straight stitch. I'm gonna show you on the other side, see how it's already doing that little gathering thing? Um, this is what it looks like on the back and the more lines you do the more gather it gets but then at the end we're gonna give it some steam and then it'll gather it'll shrink up and it'll give you that shearing effect so we're just gonna keep going doing those straight lines at the end I just kind of pull it a little bit and go to the next one so that way we don't have to cut and keep going All right, so I ran out of thread and that gave me about one, two, three, four lines, like four and a half lines. So now I'm going to go ahead and fill up my bobbin and I might fill up a couple because I have a couple and then continue on doing that straight stitch. But look at how cute it's already looking. So now that I'm finished, this is what it looks like and it's looking pretty good, but I want to give it a good steam for it to shrink up. And I'm gonna show you how it does that once I'm done. All right, so as you can see, it looks pretty good, the shearing, but then you wanna steam it and it makes it, like it shrinks it up. Look how it's bringing it in. Do you see that? Like it's right here. I don't want my finger to burn. Ugh. 
but like it, it brings it in and it shrinks it up even more. I'm just steaming it. Now my steam button is not working very well on this on this one, but I'm not really putting the iron on top of it. I'm just kind of hovering it right above it. But look at how much tighter it is. All right, so now that we've done with that part, now all I'm going to do is I'm just gonna piece them together, put them right sides together, and I'm gonna sew those side seams all the way down, and then we're just going to attach our straps and add that tear, or you know, if you wanna leave it short, I'll try it on and show you what it looks like short, and then we can add that tear, and that's it. That's all there is to it. This was super simple and super cute. All right, friends, this dress is coming along. It's looking super cute. I can't wait to add that tear and then some like uh, straps or sleeves to um, add like little accent to it. I think it's gonna be adorable. So let's finish it up. All right, so now we're gonna talk bottom tier. Now I don't want something super long. I'm thinking like five inches. That way it'll have uh, like, it's like four inches because I take the seam allowance from the top and then the hem allowance. So I'm gonna go with uh, five times. So I did my uh, skirt, the width of my skirt. Uh, I like to do usually for a uh, ruffle like one and a half. So I'm going to do three of the same size as what I have here. So three of the size 36 width. So I'll do three and then I'll sew them together to create one long one and then we'll gather it the width of the bottom and attach it. So that's what we're doing for the ruffle. And then for the sleeve, I'm gonna try something that I've never ever done before and I don't think, I don't know if I've seen it done before, but I'm gonna try to figure out and see if it'll work. What I'm going to do is, and it might not work, and if it doesn't work, then we'll just do simple straps and that'll be fine. Uh, I'm gonna cut a strap first and I'm gonna make it probably like two inches wide because then I'll take off like a half an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna do two inches wide by 15, 15, 14 inches long. That's how much I measured my shoulder and that's how much I want it, how long I want it to be. And then I'm going to cut a piece of fabric that it's, um, let me show you. I tried to draw a picture, but I cannot draw for the life of me, literally. It's in my head, but I can't picture it in my mind. I can't picture it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm not gonna show you the first picture. Here's my strap. So it's gonna be a straight strap. And then I'm going to cut um, fabric that is gonna go kind of like in a circle oval shape. Well, it went too long. Kind of in an oval shape. And then it's gonna be like longer on the inside. So then I'm going to kind of gather it a little bit. So it's like a gathered um, puffy sleeve. And I'm gonna saw it in between the two layers. So I have like a little, um, like a little gathered, like poofy sleeve hanging out. So it's gonna go, it's gonna go, this is a horrible picture. I can't even draw a picture, but I, I'm gonna cut it and then I'll show you what it looks like. So it's like, it's got a straight edge that I'm going to gather. And then the top is just gonna kind of go like, like in this shape, like that. So it's shorter at the sides, but then I'm gonna gather the middle so it just kind of sits on top of my shoulder. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut a, 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 a sleeve the width, so I'm doing, the width is gonna be 14, so I'm gonna do like width and a half. So that way I can do like, gather a little bit and have it flutter. And then I'm going to, um, I hope this is all making sense. And I'm going to hem the edge of the sleeve first. So what I'm going to do is with the strap, the strap is gonna be 14 inches long, okay? And then so I want the ruffle to be like two, uh, one and a half that so I can gather it and have like the little fluttery effect. I think it's gonna work. I'm not really sure. I'm just kind of, I literally just thought of this. We'll see what, how it works. So I want it to be like one and a half. So that's gonna be uh, 21, 21. Yes, so I'll do the, the bottom, the straight part will be 21. And then I'll come in like this, like this. And then what I'll do is I'll hem the outer edge. Then I'll gather it and I kind of will sandwich it as I'm sewing the, the, the strap shot. I'm gonna sandwich it right sides together, sew it shut, 
Then I'm gonna flip it right side out and hopefully have like a little fluttery right here, fluttery cap is what I'm gonna have. I'm hoping that that's gonna work. So that's what I'm going to do. So let me cut my fabric first, uh, one and a half stripe by um, five, yeah, by five inches for the, for the gather at the bottom and then I'm gonna cut the strap and I'm gonna cut the flutter sleeve. All right, here I go trying to figure out this sleeve situation. I'm gonna cut it in half. That way it is a mirror image instead of it being two different pieces. I'm gonna start at it being about, let's do four inches. That way it flutters down. And since I don't know how to draw, I'm going to use this ruler to help me go down evenly. So I'm just going shoop. And this is gonna be my quote unquote cap sleeve. And actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cut four of these and line it instead of doing the hem. Then it'll just be like a lined cap sleeve like that. Then I'll gather this and this will be the flutter. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. I went four inches, I started at four inches and went all the way down. All right, now I'm going to sew these raw edges together. Oh, this is my strap. The raw edges of the ruffle together at the ends, right sides together, to create one long ruffle. And then I'm gonna go into my sewing machine and gather it. I think I dropped one. Then once I do that, I'm gonna grab, this is my, my strap. I'm gonna gather this. This I made a, lo a lot longer than it needed to be. I don't know why. Let's see. 13 would be like right here. I think it's because it was just how long the piece was. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab this one. On this side, I'm gonna search that raw edge. On this side, I'm gonna put in a basting gathering stitch and I'm gonna gather it. And I'm, once I gather, I'm gonna place it right here, right sides together like this, all the way gathered. And I'm gonna place this right on top, like a sandwich, and sew it together. And then when we flip it right side out, it'll be hanging out. Now if you wanted to, the best way to do this, and I think I'm just gonna stop being lazy and do it, would be to grab two pieces and put them right sides together, and sew them together. Oh, they're not the exact same piece. That's okay, because when I sew them together, they will become the exact same piece. Sew them right sides together, so that this raw edge right here it's encased, lined, instead of it being raw or having a sleeve. So that's what I'm going to do. Y'all, this is my creative process. I just kind of see it and I go with it and I'm just taking you along for the ride today. I was just gonna do straps, but I'm giving you an extra. This is a uh, extra little part of my creative process. I feel like, you know, sometimes you just have to go with it and let the fabric speak to me and hope that it turns out as cute as I see it in my head. So I'm gonna sew these two together and create two more of these and then I'll sandwich that right sides with my strap. I'll come back to do that. So I'm gonna do that and sew these together and I'll be right back. Before I put in that gathering stitch, I'm gonna turn this sleeve that I created and um, steam it down. So now it's gonna be right side out. And then I'm gonna put that basting stitch at the bottom to gather. I hope it's still gonna flutter even though it's lined now. I think it's gonna be okay. 
It's not going to flutter as much, but I think it's going to be good. I'm actually going to top stitch the outside of the sleeve um, to see if that might help make it not so bulky looking. All right, so now for the bottom of where the gather is, the gathering is, you can actually go ahead and hem now if you want, or you can hem after you attach it. Uh, I might go ahead and, and sew that raw edge, like finish it out with, um, on my serger and then top stitch it, but I'll probably do that later. So I'm gonna put that aside. We're gonna end up gathering that, the width of our dress. But I'm gonna grab, here is my strap. Where's my other strap? The one I already cut out. Remember I cut one to the correct length. The other one I didn't yet, so let me cut it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my ruffle and I'm going to gather it the width of my sleeve, maybe even just a little bit less than my sleeve. And then I'm going to attach it, the right sides together, right here. And you can go ahead and like baste it on first if you want, um, so that when you sew them together, it doesn't move on you. Because we're gonna attach it right here. So I'm gonna go over there and baste it on. So like a long straight stitch, because then, hold on, let me show you. Okay, we're gonna baste it on first, because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this side and flip it right on top, and then I'm going to enclose that ruffle in there and sew that raw edge. But if it's not basted on first, it can move on you. And being this fabric, a lot of times I just go for it, but this fabric is so flimsy, I'm, I'm afraid it's going to move on me and, and get all messed up, and I don't want that. So I'm going to, I am going to baste it on, and I am also, while I'm basting this on, I'm going to um, sew the raw edge on that because, well, either I can do that or I can go ahead and show you how I'm going to gather it and attach it to the dress. Maybe I'll do that. All right, so I'm gonna put these aside and now I'm gonna grab my dress. I'm gonna lay it out, this bottom part. I'm gonna mark the half of it. There's my sides. I'm gonna mark my front and my back, my halves, or quarters. And then I'm going to grab my ruffle, that's my sleeves, and I'm going to gather it the width of my um, dress. All right, once my gathers are even, these ones look pretty even, I'm going to go ahead and attach them right sides together. So now I'm folding this over and I'm going to sandwich the ruffle inside. Be careful not to catch um, the ruffle, just the edge. What you see coming out right here, like the corners that I didn't really want, the little tiny edges, I'm just gonna trim those right off before I sew this down. All right, let's turn these around. I think these are gonna be super cute. Look at it. How cute is this little ruffle sleeve thing? That is so cute, I love that. Okay, 
Um, so I tried on my dress and I marked where I wanted my sleeves, my straps to be, the front and the back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the front on and baste the back. I mean, you could sew it on an inseam ripper if, it, if it's not tight enough or whatnot. That's going to be so... I love this sleeve. Oh my word. If anything else, this sleeve is just super cute. Okay, so I want to grab... Um, let's see. Where my front? Right here. And I'm going to go sew it on or baste it on. Well, I'll sew it on. And then I'll sew the back as well. And then I'll try it on. Let me get my pins. I'll try it on and then adjust it from there. And then after that, all we've got to do is the hem. So what we're really just doing, we're just going to place that sleeve, that strap right at, right at the back of it and then stitch it down. That's all we're doing. Super easy. And you could just pin it and try it on and see what it looks like and then sew it. It's up to you. And then all I have to do after that is go back and hem my, where did it come from? Here it is. Hem my skirt bottom and that's it. We're done. And then I'm going to show you about it. Now, I will tell you that the, I did, remember I said I did twice my, the waist around. It is a little bit loose. I could stand to do it a little bit tighter. So probably... 175 instead of one instead of two um but i can always trim or or take in the sides which is better than having to having it be too tight um so but because i have the straps i think it's going to be just fine i think it's going to be super cute so i'm going to go sew those on try it on and show you what it ends up looking like i'm super excited Y'all, I am finished. How adorable did this dress turn out? Look at that. Super cute. I love it. I think the sleeves are super, super cute. Very, very cute touch. I just love how this looks. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please comment, like, share, subscribe. Uh, let me know if you have any questions below. And I'll see you next time. Bye!